So UiPath just released context grounding. So it's no longer in public preview. It is GA or generally available. That means it's production ready. A couple of months ago, I released a video where I took a look at the public preview of uh, Context Grounding. Now it's ready, and I'll uh, show you how it works now. There have been some changes made and uh, improvements made. So let's uh, get into the platform. So here we are inside of my platform, and the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the admin section. Here, you can see that there's this uh, new AI trust layer that you can click. And when you go in here, you have different sections, usage, summary, audit, AI governance, autopilot and context grounding. If you click context grounding, then you are able to in here create new indexes. And in case you missed the first video, what happens when you use context grounding is when you ask an LLM for some information, you can enhance the response from that LLM with um, information that is specific, for example, to your company. It's an example of retrieval augmented generation basically where you retrieve some information, but you augment the LLM response with data from your own data index or document index. And that's what you can do here. You can create these indexes that will then enhance the response from the LLM. So uh, what we can see here is we can see our tenant folders here, and I have a folder called demos, and this is where I want to create the index. So I just click the add new button here, Previously, you had to do this with an activity inside your automation. So you had to build an automation that would then create the index and index it. And then you'd have to wait for that to be complete and then you could use it. Now you can uh, create the index like this beforehand. So uh, what we need to uh, add is an index name. We'll just call this one uh, Yebis Index. And then you can select whether you want to use a storage bucket or an uh, integration service connection. For example, if I wanted to use a SharePoint folder or a Google uh, Drive, then you can use the uh, integration service connection. So I could choose yeah, IS connection. Then I could choose my orchestrator folder. That would be my demos because in that folder, I do have um, a connection to my OneDrive. I would select OneDrive and SharePoint. And then I could select the connection that I have. And then I can click the data source location. I could select OneDrive, and then I have a folder here called A Context Ground Folder. And I could click that, select folder, and then click Sync Now, and then it would sync whatever files are in that folder with this index. I don't want to do that. I want to use a storage bucket in Orchestrator to store my files. So I'll actually just click Cancel. And then I'll go to Orchestrator, select the Demos folder, go to Storage Buckets, add a new storage bucket, and I'll just call this one my index. Now, my documents and click add. Then I want to go into that folder and upload a file. I have a file on my desktop. It's just a text document and we'll upload it. Now that we have a document in our storage bucket, we'll go back to the um, admin section into the AI trust layer uh, section go to the context grounding tab. We'll now select the demos folder again, add a new index, call it Yebis index, select that it needs to be from a storage bucket. We'll select my demos folder and then select the my documents folder as the storage bucket from which to create the index. And then you can select the file type that you want to include, PDF, comma separated values, JSON, documents, and of course, a text file. Mine, my file was a text file. So we'll just, we'll just say all file types and say sync now. Now it's generating an index from the files in my storage bucket. And that was a very small single text file, so it shouldn't take long. In fact, if I press F5 now, we can see that the sync is in progress. If I press F5, And we can see here that now we have an index that has actually been built. So now we have uh, that to use inside of an automation. So let's jump over here into this tab. This is UiPath uh, Studio Web. In Studio Web, now in public preview, you have something called a web app. And that's basically a UiPath app 
that has been enriched by being able to build in automations directly into the app. It's it's pretty cool. It'll it'll change apps, I think, uh, a whole lot when when this is uh, finally released. But what we're going to do here is basically we have a text field here called txt question. We have a button called btn submit. And when I hit the submit button, I want to submit whatever query or question you type into that text box. Submit that to uh, an LLM, and then get a response back. We start by doing it without using the uh, context grounding. So. Basically, um, what I want to do is I want to click the Submit button here, go to the Events tab, and what used to be uh, something like uh, Build a Rule or something like that, Create Event, I forget what it was, is now Define Automation, because now you're defining the automation directly inside of this development environment. So I'll click Define Automation, and now you can see here what you might have seen if you've ever used Studio Web is this way of, of defining an automation. So I'll click the plus here to add another activity, we can search for the Gen AI activities. And uh, down here somewhere, there's one called uh, Content Generation. We'll select that. And what we can see here is that there is a, a Gen AI activities connection. That is a connection that I've already created inside of Integration Service. Um, and you need to do that. And if you want to know how to do it, watch the first video. I have linked uh, to that up here somewhere. Uh, you can you can watch that video to see how to create that that connection. Anyways, we'll need to select what model we want to use. We'll just take this uh, version of GPT right here. And then the prompt is, of course, going to be the text that is entered into the text box. So if I click here, I can select from the uh, header content uh, app, as it's called. We can find the TXT question and select the value from that. So that will be the prompt that we'll submit uh, to the LLM. Other than that, we're not going to do anything. We are going to, down here, we can show us additional properties and we can here see the different uh, stuff that we get back um, and, and what the variables are called once the response has been returned from the model. So we'll just type in here as a new activity log message. Select that. And what that means is it'll log the uh, output from the uh, model over here in this uh, log message panel. And the message that we want to log is basically the text from the content generation activity. So just select that and that's it. So now if we run this uh, automation or this app as it's called, is we'll see the app being displayed here. I, I mean, I could, of course, have output this uh, this message to a, a label in the app. I'm not going to do that. We'll just say, um, who on earth is the smartest person measured by IQ? Something like that. And we'll click Submit. And what happens now is that the app is running in the background. And if we switch back, copy this uh, entire response, open notepad, paste it in. And we can see here that uh, Marilyn von Savant is considered one of the smartest people ever, measured by IQ, yada, yada, yada. OK, great. Let's close this again. Now let's try it with context grounding. So what we did up here in the um, in the content generation is we selected not to use content uh, context grounding. We selected none here. We could have selected to use it. Oh, I need to stop the uh, app first. We could have selected to use context grounding here. We could either use a file resource, so basically pointing directly to a file, or we can point to an existing index. And if we want to point to an existing index, we need to point to the orchestrator folder. That will, in this case, be the demos folder. In the demos folder, we have one index called Yebes index. And now if we ask the same question, it's going to look into that index or in that file in that index and, and, and then maybe modify the response. So let's uh, try again. Test on cloud. That's going to start up the app. Who on earth is the smartest person measured 
by IQ. We'll submit it. We can see over here in the debug panel, we don't have anything yet. As soon as I click submit, we should see a response coming back fairly soon. There we go. We'll copy and paste this, go back into Notepad, paste in the response. The claim made in the document that Yeppe is the smartest person in the world with an IQ of 50,000 is not credible. Damn it. I did not expect that. Oh, anyways, we can see here that <clears throat> the document says something different than, uh, than what the response was with, when we didn't have the context grounding. However, um, it doesn't seem like a credible claim inside of the document, so I was busted. But you can see here that it did actually look into that index because in that index there was one file and the only thing that it said was that I was the smartest person in the world with an IQ of 50,000. I think this proves that I'm not. But this works really well. And if we now go back into, uh, into Orchestrate or into the Automation Cloud and we look at the context grounding here, we can, if we refresh here, we can see now that uh, this, uh, this index was last queried just now. We can also go over to this tab called Usage Summary. And we can now see here that uh, some requests have been made to, um, to different parts of the AI part of the platform. Uh, there's something called LLM Actions um, uh, per status and then also per product. And we can see here that um, five requests have been made to context grounding so far. In the previous video I did about context grounding, none of this existed. All you could do was you could create an index using code, point it to a storage bucket. Now that, uh, that capability has been expanded, you can point it to a storage bucket. You could also use a file before, but now you can use also the uh, integration service connection to a SharePoint site or to a Google Drive. So lots of improvements made, stability, performance, and uh, most of all, uh, you, you can also watch uh, or keep track of how many AI units you spend because this does spend AI units. Now, a little curious uh, fact. I just tested this on my uh, community edition platform also. This is not a community edition, but I tested it on my community edition platform as well. It works there too so far. I don't think it will continue to because, as I said, you need AI units to use this and you can't have AI units in a community edition uh, platform because you can't. So anyways, um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I have lots of new stuff coming up and um, hopefully I'll just see you in the next video. And and uh, yeah, subscribe, like, uh, hit the notification bell, all of that. But hopefully I'll see you in the next one.